So thank you very much for this uh, kind introduction. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Constantino, to invite me to present you a special aspect of the chain from herbal, for, from let's say from the plants to the to the to the drugs. And uh, now during one hour, we are we will discussing about the very first step of of this chain. That means the, the, the breeding and cultivation, uh, the development of cultivation procedures for medicinal and arom ar aromatic plant, so that the farmers then will get good uh, cultivars, good genotypes, and the, that they uh, have good recommendation to, to produce high quality herbs or high quality medicinal plants for the, in for the extraction companies and then the, the, the industries. I will do that with some example of, of our institute. And first of all, I want to want to explain where I uh, work. Uh, I work uh, in Switzerland in, in the mountain regions uh, in this uh, research center, Conte, which which uh, is a center uh, of Agroscope Jean Ravensville. We are working on this this group of plants, on medicinal or aromatic plants, on small fruits, mainly raspberries and strawberries, on fruit growing, here mainly apricots now, and then glasshouse crops are also uh, aspects that we are, we are uh, studying. So today we are discussing about medicinal and aromatic plant. Uh, in Conte, there is also a, a spin-off of Agroscop called Mediplan. It's a, it's a research center for medicinal aromatic plants. About six persons, let's say six persons are working there. Um, this was uh, created, this research center, about 25 years ago. And it was created because uh, companies very often like to like more to collaborate with 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 private uh, research institute than with a public institute uh, as it as it is uh, agroscope because of uh, of confidentiality con of ip or uh, aspects which is much easier to to handle with with, with private companies than with public uh, institutions so that was the reason 25 years ago. Now everything is, is, has changed, and also public institutes are, can, can can make uh, confidential contracts with with companies for for certain works. And uh, excuse me. And what we are doing in Conte, uh, Agroscope and Mediplant, is what I said before: the very first steps of the chain from 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 herbs to drugs is the breeding new cultivars or testing cultivars from other countries, optimizing the cultivation techniques and plant protection against diseases and pests. Uh, so optimizing the cultivation techniques always in relation with the, with the best cultivar. Quality aspects are very important. Uh, we will discuss later on that. And then we are also doing some expertises. We are doing consultings and sometimes these teaching us today. Uh, we have some fee, uh, fields, greenhouse, all the things we need to, to have for, for good uh, agronomic research. And uh, that, that introduced me now to, the, to, the, to my presentation. So I first will introduce some aspects concerning the use in the market of medicinal plants and then some aspects on the importance of uh, agronomic research and uh, and biodiversity, and then I will follow with some uh, concrete examples with, of projects of Agroscope and Mediplan, uh, and I will then finish with the conclusion and perspectives. Concerning the use of medicinal plants, uh, as you know, uh, plants are the source of many important pharmaceuticals, especially plants rich in secondary metabolites are of interest. And why plants have secondary met metabolites? Uh, these metabolites, uh, these metabolites, give the plant a, a, a competitive advantage uh, in in evolution, and the presence of of such particular secondary metabolite confers an advantage to the species during evolution. The secondary metabolites are sought to to be beneficial for the plant itself, or 
or it can help to, to manage stress better, for, for example, uh, for alpine plants, frost stress, for example, or for, uh, for other plants in the desert, uh, dryness can support best, better dryness, or which is uh, proven a lot, several times, is uh, the stress, is the role in plant resistance against pests and diseases that uh, they had some secondary metabolites in the in the leaves, for example, and some diseases couldn't develop when, when the when this metabolite is is there, or the same thing uh, with pests that they can't uh, uh, digest, for example, uh, some aspects in the leaves uh, that uh, and they, they 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 couldn't propagate in the fields. Uh, according to, to, to the presence of the secondary metabolite. Some of these secondary metabolite, as you know, as, uh, as you have heard in your studies, certainly have a beneficial impact on the human health and well-being. And the main issue now is, uh, is related to human health is to, to maintain these, these plant metabolites uh, in, in nature or, or, or in cultivated fields and to op optimize the production. Uh, we are speaking about medicinal plants, but that could the use could be very diverse. It could be uh, pharmacological use, or it could be functional foods, could be nutraceutical, could be OTC, could be aromatherapy, etc. And that, that, that's a, a term which is used uh, for a lot of applications. Very sensitive. So the use of medicinal plants is still important even uh, nowadays. In developing countries, about 80% of the population relies still now on, on uh, traditional medicines, mostly plant drugs for their uh, primary health care needs. They, they, they use this plant probably because they have nothing else. So, uh, so these uh, plants, this strategy could be could be uh, summarized as health for, for all in a cost-effective manner in these developing countries. Uh, uh, but also in in uh, in modern, modern pharmacopoeia, also in Europe, uh, we have uh, still 25% uh, of the drugs derived from from plants, uh, as well as many others which which are synthetic analogs of plant compounds. Uh, there are a lot of examples. Recently, the demand on plant-based therapeutics and, uh, is increasing globally due to the growing interest in natural products. We have, uh, I've seen different uh, indications that the uh, that, uh, gro gross income increases about 10% every year <coughs> of products which are, which are based on, on plants. So the, the increase is very high, it's, even, it's as, is as high as uh, informatic business. So more and more demand are also for disease conditions where, where the modern drugs uh, are either unavailable or unsatisfactory. The more, I mean, the, for, for example, for, for complex diseases like Alzheimer diseases, Parkinson diseases, multiple sclerosis, there are some demands, more and more demands in this di to treat such diseases with, with plants. And there are some uh, several studies who, who, who are showing that that could be an interesting way to, to control better these, these diseases. So the sources of medicinal plants, so most of the medicinal plants are harvested from wild, and the harvesting from wild are, are, is also regulated in, in, in a lot of, uh, lot of countries by the International Society of, uh, of uh, Sustainable Collection of Medicinal Aromatic Plant, or also by, by, by fair wild uh, uh, recommendations. Harvesting, uh, However, if a, if, a, if a plant, the demand is increasing, then very often it gives, if the problem harvesting from white, especially for, for such species, are often unsustainable because, uh, because when the demand is increasing, the price is also increasing, and then the people are, uh, are very interested to collect such plants to get a, a good income, and that has then a negative co consequences uh, 
concerning depletion of, of the resource base that mean the decrease of bio, biodiversity due to overharvesting and, and the loss of the species in, in a certain region. Also, uh, harvesting from wild gives also some problems because uh, if you have this same species and if you collect from different valleys or the different regions, it has not the same phyto phytochemistry very often. And if you harvest it at, uh, at different development stages, it's also the, the phytochemistry can change. So uh, the, these products are not very, very standardized. Um, another problem we have uh, actually is not only over harvesting, but also land conversion and, and habitat loss uh, gives a lot of pressure on, 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 on a lot of species. And it is considered that about 50,000 species of medicinal aromatic and aromatic plant are endangered now. <coughs> and uh, it will be very difficult to, to maintain all the species uh, in, for the future. Here, uh, here a typical scheme of uh, what uh, happens if, uh, for example, the group of Professor Constantino had it's very successful, and he discovered that the plan had very good, uh, uh, very good indications, or very good effects on, on the disease. Then the demand will increase, and uh, and uh, the people will uh, will harvest from wild more of these species, and then it that gives it will give a plateau. Then you can't collect more than than the nature gives, and then if you collect the maximum, the plant has very big difficulties to, to, uh, to survive, to, to, to finish the cycle or, or the growth cycle or things like that. And then the plant, the number of plants will, de will decrease dramatically. And in the, same, in the same time, the price increases. And if the, the demand still increases and, and the, the availability goes down, the, 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 the price still increases at a certain level that c cultivation comes interesting. And uh, it, at a certain price, the people, the farmers are thinking, oh, that's interesting to produce that. They invest in this, in this crop, in this plant, and then the production is, 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 uh, is starting. And with the production, agricultural production, the, it is relatively easy to, to find an equilibrium between, between the demand and the production. And then that stabilizes the price at a, at a certain level. A certain level. Now, uh, normally the process is not stopped here. Uh, if it's if if it's only one or two molecules which is which were important in a plant, they could probably be synthesized chemically, and then uh, then the cultivation was not interesting because the price would go down. Perhaps it will be here. Uh, Chemical production of the of the, of the interesting uh, active compounds or production in in, in bioreactors that is that are are also possible uh, uh, scenarios which are which are possible here uh, later on. Now uh, you know certainly that on the planet we have about half a million of plants. Uh, Let's say uh, about 50 to 70,000 fish species are considered as medicinal plants, most often used as tradi in, in traditional medicines for primary health care needs. 2,500 species are, international, are in international trade. Actually, about the uh, market volume of uh, $60 billion uh, per year. And uh, the FAO said 10 years ago that about 200 species are cultivated, I think, due to a lot of uh, research uh, in, in this field about, I think I'm now about 500 species of medicinal and ar aromatic plants are cultivated now. For companies trading with medicinal plants, they, they, they very often they have one or two very important plants and then 20 others uh, not very important volume so the, the, the species which are important in volume in general are, are, uh, are plants from cultivation 
And in general, the, 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 the companies use 60 to 90 percent of the volume of medicinal plants which came from cultivated production. So why cultivation is, is very interesting, especially for, 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 for species with high demand. Uh, as we saw before, the continuing supply of raw material is guaranteed. It's much easier to respond to an increase in demand or to a decrease in demand. Production volume and price can be agreed for longer periods. Then, very important, that the genotypes that, that we use in cultivation can be standardized and improved by, by breeding. I will give some examples then later on. And quality standards are easy to maintain with optimal cultivation procedures. There is one, one very important thing is to define the optimal, the optimal harvest stage. Uh, and also post-harvest post handling is easier. Uh, certification of the production is, is also possible and uh, also positive aspects, especially important for uh, species with high demand, is that there is no risk of, a, of the decrease of biodiversity due to over harvesting of wild plants uh, when we cultivate, that is clear. Uh, but there is one problem, one problem with cultivation is that we need first uh, to invest and before that we can, can produce and, and earn money. That is not a problem in Europe or in, um, uh, or in Western countries, but that is a big, big problem in, in Africa. And uh, they had no money to, to invest uh, in a production. And uh, very often uh, companies from, uh, from England or from, from, or from Europe or, or US invest there and the whole profit goes back to these to these Western countries and, and is not is, and is not staying there in Africa where, where, where the people need very much this, this money. So these are the positive aspects and one negative aspect of cultivation and to, to cultivation uh, research and development is very important. Research and development in botany, conservation of genetic resources, breeding, optimizing cultivation techniques that are very important. And we are working in this field in, in Agroscope Jean Jean Wedensfield. Also, very important is to maintain the biodiversity because without biodiversity, without diversity, it's not possible to, for breeding. Uh, maintaining biodiversity is a reservoir of potentially important genes which, which are necessary for crop improvements. Uh, therefore, it's very important to, to, to that public money is used for to, to, to pay botanical gardens or gene banks or, or also research institute to, to maintain this, this, uh, this species and also different uh, genotypes of the species and to evaluate there and to conserve them because uh, we never know what will happen in the future. It's, it's, and it's only public money who, 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 who will pay such, such work. Also important is uh, to, to maintain local and neglected varieties of, of cultivated species. Uh, they could be key genes for important trains, traits, uh, which can be important for the future. So now I will uh, speak about th the work we do. So that is the very first step of the whole chain uh, from, from herbs to the, to the drug, that is to breed plants, that to breed cultivars or genotypes which are perfect for cultivation on the one hand and which are very standardized for, for industry on the other hand. I have some examples here uh, concerning the breeding for increased level of a desired compound, breeding for better homogeneity to standardize the production, Breeding for resistance against biotic factors, here a, a disease or pest. De breeding for decreasing, we, we have in plants also not on, only desired uh, compounds, but we have also undesired compounds. And uh, it will, it some, sometimes it's interesting to, de to decrease the unde undesired compounds. And then uh, at the end, uh, an example of uh, domestication of a wild species to avoid loss of biodiversity in the future. So the first uh, example is Artemisia annua, uh, breeding for increased levels of a desired compound. 
Artemisia arnio is very efficient against uh, Plasiomodium falciparum, the, the pathogen of malaria, one of the pathogens of malaria, the, the, the strongest one. And artemisinin is in this plant, and artemisinin extracted from, from the leaves of Artemisia annua is a very good source. source. Uh, it's a very good uh, molecule to, to compete this plasmodium, and at, at the moment the only source of artemisinin is plant production. Uh, the biggest problems of malaria, you know that, are in Africa, here with the Anopheles, uh, and then uh, the transmission of the, of the plasmodium, and then uh, the development of the disease in, in humans. This is a field in Africa for, uh, of, uh, of Artemisia annua. And what we have done in, in, uh, Agros, in, in Mediplan, that's about the project of Mediplan, we analyzed a little bit this plant, and, and our aim was to increase the level of artemisinin. Artemisinin is in the leaf. Artemisinin are in the trichomes here. These trichomes, uh, trichomes a little bit greater. And the molecule of the, the artemisinin is this one. Very specific is this perox peroxide bridge, which is highly, highly efficient, especially if you have a lot of ferrum in, 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 in the medium. And that could be a reason why, why it's, uh, it's so effective against falciparum in the, in the red uh, blood uh, bodies. Huh? So what uh, we've done uh, uh, is that we tested all the available genetic resources we, we, we could get from, from, from the whole planet. We studied flora biology and we saw that if you have a, if you have a plant of Artemisia annua, you have nearly no seed. If you have another plant, uh, another plant beside, then you will get seed. That means that there is no, no self-pollination in, in, in for a, there's no self-pollination for a plant. You need to have a, uh, another plant who gives the pollen and then that, that gives seeds. That is very interesting and very easy then for us to make, uh, to make breeding. It's not always so easy. So you have the same situation as with apples. You also, we always need, need two uh, cultivars of apples to get apples, otherwise uh, you have no apples. So that was easy for us. We, can, we, we have chosen classical breeding techniques and in vitro techniques. So the first thing was to test uh, several, several uh, accessions or clones from all over the planet. We've, we, do, we still do this work now, uh, and we see that, it's quite, that, that there is a relatively high variability within the species in the artemisinin content. And then what we've done we take the best one, or, or the best and the last. Uh, this, for example, this one and this one. We make these crossings, and then we analyze the progenies, the seeds, the progenies of this of these two parental lines, and uh, test it so the combining ability of two parents. And what, uh, for as an example here. Uh, we had this uh, sta this Artemis cultivar, which was developed about uh, 15 years ago from Mediplan, and uh, two or two or three years ago, a new cultivar was was launched. Uh, it, the name was Apollon, and uh, we see here that uh, that this was one of the gives very good results in this in these testings with very high artemisinin content, about two percent of the leaf dry weight. That is very high. And uh, uh, till now, it's the, it's the cultivar with the highest artemisinin content in the world. And uh, we can, we still continue to improve this because if, uh, if you have high contents in the, in, in, in the leaves, that means for the same work, for the same uh, investment, you will get much more artemisinin Artemisinin cost will decrease and will be more will become more available for African people. A another important thing is to maintain the parental lines, and the parental lines uh, will will then be multiplied, and then will be used to to make the seeds, and the seeds then will, will be sent to the to the farmers, and. Uh, 
it's very important to to, cons to have these in vitro techniques to, to maintain the parental lines and to make uh, and that gives also the possibility to to uh, increase the number of plants very rapidly. So we, uh, what I can say here is that uh, we, are, we are doing the breeding works. We, we try to find the, the, the very good genotypes for the farmers. The, we do that by, by producing the, the seeds, and then the seeds are sold to the farmers in Africa. We have about 5,000 hectares of Artemisia anua in Tanzania, Kenya. Here you see a small farmer village uh, and, and, uh, and uh, fields here. They were very harvested, everything was made by hand. And then came to Kenya, this, this material came to Kenya to an extraction company. And here you see the powder of artemisinin after, after extraction and crystallization. And then this powder go to, to, a, to a pharmaceutical company here in this, this, this example, it was Syngenta. Uh, and they are producing Riamet. You can, you can, I think you, Riamet you can buy here in the pharmacy of Varese. And Coartem is actually the, exactly the same thing you can buy in Africa, Coartem, which is uh, sold at, uh, uh, without benefits for, for not again for Novartis, excuse me. And, uh, and they, they are distributed in Africa to compete this, uh, this disease. So second, uh, second example is uh, Timus vulgaris. Uh, and here, the, one of the objectives was to, to increase the homogeneity of, of, of a cultivar and to increase also the level of desired compounds. Here, desired compounds are the essential oil. And uh, our, the industry we are working together, they, they, they want Timus essential oil of the type, Timol type. So this was the result of all the work. This was the, the, the cultivar Varico 3 here uh, in a field in, in, in Swiss mountain regions. So you see that the, that the field is, is very homogeneous. The plants are very homogeneous. One plant is exactly the same plant uh, as the other. It is terrible for a farmer if you have plants in your field. One is flowering three months earlier, uh, three weeks earlier than the other. Then you don't know wh when to harvest. The quality is decreasing, and you you never have the, the optimal harvest stage in these conditions. So it is very important to have homogeneous uh, homogeneous uh, cultivars to 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 produce good quality herbs. So how we the approach to get good homogeneity is that and that is very interesting also for us breeders that in nature for a lot of plants there are species they don't they don't produce uh, anthers or pollen and so they are male sterile they are not very not very often but uh, for for uh, lamiase uh, they, that occurs in some species among them uh, thymus and we are very lucky that we found such such individuals and here you see a normal thymus and hem hermaphroditic thymus with, with the female part and the, and the male part of the flowers. And uh, that is very interesting now. If we, if we choose two interesting parents, one, this one, then the pollen goes to this one and we have a, 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 a directed pollination and we harvest only seeds from this one and that gives very, very, gives very, very homogeneous uh, cultivars then, and that will have this approach we tried with, with Tumus, and uh, here's some important discussions. And we tried then to do what I said, uh, and then the, the pollen goes from here to here, and this plant, uh, the seeds which were built here was, was uh, harvested, and uh, this gives them the seed of the cultivar. This was uh, tested. We had to make several tests. We had to choose first the parents, and then we have to choose the, the best combination of the parents. We had five clones of male, 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 uh, male fertile clones. We have male sterile clones, 12, 12 clones. The origin of, of these uh, parental lines came from wild population, from the Austa Valley. 
or from breeding material from our, our institute or uh, some individuals, interesting individuals of an old cultivar which is called Deutscher Winter. And uh, this combination gave uh, six, uh, normally 60 hybrids, but four were not viable, so we had only uh, uh, 56. And we evaluated of these progenies, the, 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 the yield, the quality, etc. Uh, we do. We have done that do, during three years uh, here in this in this field. Uh, that gives the, the the results. The red one is the the cultivar we we decided to uh, to promote, and we gave them the the the, the name Varico Three. So you see, the, the, there were a big dif there were big differences between between the the progenies of this of this selection concerning the leaf dry weight, concerning the essential oil also, but there was no correlation between the yield and the essential oil, and the essential oil yield was then the combination of both. We see that uh, this is, uh, is a very interesting cultivar. We have chosen this one because it gives also quite a lot amount of seeds. And then for farming, it's also important to have cultivars which are e which, which were uh, which gives the possibility to to produce easily seeds. Otherwise, the seed costs will be much too high for the farmers if you have uh, if, if you have parents give uh, giving only a little amount of seeds. We tested it to to another cultivar we developed about uh, ten years ago and compared to, uh, to Deutscher Winter, which is used in Germany. And we see that, uh, that there was not a very big increase in, in, in yield, but a very, very, uh, this new cultivar was much better concerning the, con the content of essential oil. And also the, the yield, consequently, the yield was also much higher. Uh, in two years, we have uh, 190 liters of essential oil per hectare. Uh, also, the homogeneity was much better than, than the normal normal population cultivars. We see here the coefficient of variation of the stem lengths, the internode lengths, the leaf lengths, uh, which are lower than that of the population cultivars. Another aspect uh, which I mentioned before are the, the composition of the essential oil uh, markets in Switzerland and in uh, in Germany are interested in time oil, in time oil uh, essential oil. We see that the, the, the new cultivar has more or less the same profile of, of molecules in the essential oil. Uh, but there are also other Timus uh, species, or Timus cultivars, which, for example, this here from France, uh, which with a lot of carvacrol and linanol, uh, and another one uh, with uh, also from France, which which is a, it's a sort of equilibrium of Timol and Carvacrol. With this was mainly used for perfume industry. So it depends on the use of uh, of, of these plants. Uh, it's important to consider the composition of the essential oil. That is clear. No? We, this approach with the mild sterile and the mild fertile, male fertile plants, we, we use it also with, with Satch, which gave also a very good result, this, this, this cultivar regular. We use, we use it with, with oregano, also good results. We used it also with, uh, with Edelweiss, which gave, which gave us uh, also good result, because with Edelweiss it was a very big problem that we had to solve. Is, is not the production, it's very easy, but the, the big problem was to, 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 to have a cultivar where all the plants flowered at the same time and all the, plant, all the flowers are, uh, had a, about the same height that the farmers can come and cut it with a, with a, with a machine and then harvest this edelweiss in a, in a, in a, in a let's say, in a mechanically. And we, we, we arrived with, with this approach also to, to get such a, such a homogeneous cultivar. So now uh, an, uh, another interesting uh, plant is Hypericum perforatum. It's not so interesting for us because, uh, because we have a plant, we have uh, more uh, disease, 
but we know nothing about the, or not, not nothing, uh, excuse me, but we know not exactly which molecule is very important to, to have these, uh, these antidepressive effects. Uh, so uh, for us, it's very difficult to work with, with plants and, uh, and with different uh, genotypes. So what we, uh, I come to that later, uh, the, the problem here was that there is one, one cultivar which is used, the, the name is Topaz, which is used uh, in whole Europe, the same cultivar, but this, this cultivar is very sensitive to a disease, and this disease here you see the, 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 the hypericum, and uh, the, with the disease, with this uh, fungus, which destroyed here completely the the stems and uh, no water could flow in and, and that gives uh, dryness. And my colleague, Vincent Michel, analyzed all these aspects and he found that it's called Etatrichum goliosporoides. And now the aim was to <coughs> increase the, the, the resistance to Coleotrichum fungus to maintain a good yield and very important was to maintain a phytochemical profile which is similar to the standard cultivar topaz. If you take, if you have an, another phytochemical uh, profile, or if, if you increase the, 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 the phytochemicals in the, in the plant, we don't know what, what will happen in, in the antidepressive anti effects because we don't know exactly the, the oldest, all the pathways in humans, why, the, why this plant had an antidepressive effect. So we decided to take more or less the same phytochemical profile as topaz. And to do this work, now again, it's very important to have a big biodiversity. It's very important to have, uh, to have gene banks or botanical gardens or, 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 uh, or natural areas uh, where we can find a big diversity in, of genotypes of this plant. And we find about 14 different genotypes of Hypericum, mainly from nature and some from botanical gardens. And we tested them in our, in our fields. These were all these plants we see, some are flowering earlier and some later uh, in the first year. And then in the second year, you see a lot of these, uh, a lot of these genotypes are, are not growing very well or not growing at all. They were all diseased by this coletotrichum disease, and only few stand, stands, uh, only few genotypes are well and give a good yield. And that was a very easy way to to, to test the resistance against this uh, this uh, disease. But it's only possible to do that if if uh, if the availability of genotypes is is there. So we, we've done this and uh, tested this, and we see that uh, several genotypes are not uh, diseased. Uh, dead, that means 100% dead, black, uh, uh, black, yes. And diseased is uh, very strongly diseased. So some genotypes are not diseased, this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. And here, consequently, the, the yield is higher of these not diseased plants. And we decided to take this, uh, this, this P7, and the name was Hypervivo 7, uh, the name of the cultivar. And we decided to take this one because it had more or less the same phytochemical profile than Topaz, this, this standard cultivars. And this uh, cultivar was then uh, put it on the list of, of, uh, of available uh, plants. And this work was financed by Bioforce, RGA, a Swiss company working, uh, working with uh, herbal plants. And uh, Bioforce use now this, uh, this cultivar to produce to, and give their farmers these this cultivars to produce uh, hypericum. Another, another example is uh, breeding for decreasing un undesired compound that is a uh, a species which uh, interested very much people from Piemont. Uh, this is a genepi. Uh, not, uh, not a plant was interesting, but I think uh, the liquid which could, you can produce is much more very, very, very interesting. It's so what uh, our aim was to 
in Switzerland is forbidden. In Switzerland, Swiss people like also uh, liquor of, of this, with this genebi. It's forbidden to collect that in, from nature. So we try to uh, breed a cultivar. And we try to breed a cultivar with very low tuyon content because the tuyon content is mainly of, of these plants is high with about 30 to 50 percent of the essential oil are tuyons. And you know that tuyons are um, more or less neurotoxic if you have if you drink. If you have too much, uh, if you take too much up with this tuyon in combination with alcohol. So in combination with water is not a problem. So first step was to test different species of Artemisia. We have chosen Artemisia with Ombeliformis because they had a, an erect growth and gives a certain, certain mass, biomass production. Uh, the essential oil is in these, in these uh, trichomes and the idea was uh, to, to find, uh, uh, to develop a, uh, a cultivar without tuyons. So my colleague, uh, Claude Caron goes up to the mountains and, uh, and collected seed of different alpine, plant, alpine sites of this plant. About uh, 100, 100 plants per site were, were developed and described. The, the, uh, the variability was described. Uh, this is the way we've done. These seeds came down to the greenhouse. They were, were cultivated, these this plants. And then there were... Uh, put it in the field and analyzed. And uh, <coughs> here we have four different origin. And we see uh, that uh, very interesting is the erect habitus. And if, if you have more erect habitus, that is much more interesting for farming. If you have lying, uh, lying stems on the soil, you can't harvest this thing. That's not interesting. So yeah, they must be erect. But we have, let's say, two, two are interesting, much more and simple. On Gornergrad, about 100% uh, lying, uh, lying uh, stems. That is not at all interesting. Uh, also, the yield was very good of Matmark and also of Simplon. Mortality was uh, high here, intermediate with this one. Uh, here, a chromatograph with uh, Tuyon. That is uh, and with nearly without Tuyon. Huh? And uh, what was very interesting is that uh, if you compare the four different uh, ecotypes, we found three, <coughs> three without Tuyons in the essential oil. And this one, the simple one, very, very high amount of essential oil with about 70%. So we see, you see that in nature, if you find if you find the species, and if you, you if if you analyze then the species from different regions, they can have a completely different phytochemical profile, uh, and then therefore it's very important to uh, in collect very important uh, to cultivate to have to have a standardized uh, product then. So then uh, we, we, we choose the, from this mud mark, which gives good yield and have no to you on the best, the best parental lines. We put them together and made a population cultivar. The same thing here with Simplon. And then, uh, then that gives us uh, finally two cultivars, RAC 12 without Tuyon from, from mud mark and RAC 10 with Tuyon uh, origin of Simplon. And according to the demand, uh, the, these seeds are produced by a, by, a, by a private company, which is called MediSeeds, and is sold uh, And the last example, that is uh, Rhodiola rosea, the domestication. Uh, Rhodiola rosea, it's very popular in Scandinavia and Russia. It's a plant which is a sort of a stress booster. So uh, it's a, it's a, there are also molecules in the roots which, uh, which give us the impression that we are more resistant to stress. Perhaps we will be more resistant to stress. Uh, it's an anti-fatigue effect. Uh, and uh, different other aspects which are interesting for modern human beings which are stressed all the day 
by their Natal, by their phone, mobile phone, or stress by the television, or stress by uh, huge studies also. So very interesting for uh, important CEO people, which are also stressed. So to take this, you are, this is a stress booster, and very interesting in a little, it, it became very famous because there was once uh, uh, an article in, uh, I don't know, uh, about 20 years ago, and, and becomes very famous worldwide because there was a, a, a text and there was written that uh, mothers of the Russian soldiers give, gave their, their sons two or, f or three routes with them, uh, especially when they had to go to Afghanistan, because there it's very, very tough and to resist better against the climatic stress, the, the, the highness, the stress of altitude, also the stress not to sleep very well and uh, uh, perhaps not to eat very well. <coughs> that there, there the interest on this plant, which is very well known in Scandinavia and Russia, Russia is increasing o over the whole world. And in Germany, a German company has now uh, uh, made Vitongo, uh, 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 pharmaceutical based on the roots of, of uh, Rodula rosea, and this, it's now registered in Switzerland since 2010. Uh, <coughs> the main active compounds uh, which were considered, perhaps I think, I think, the, I think that there are others also involved, is salirosite and rosavine, and international standards for extracts are this one. Uh, you see here the global distribution of this this plant. Here, uh, Europe is, uh, this is uh, Norway, England, uh, Italy is here. We are here in Varese now. And we have some, some Rogia la Rosea here in, it, in, no, in northern Italy and southern Switzerland. But very big uh, areas here in, uh, in Scandinavia and, and here in Russia. So the problem is here, now, till now, there is a collection from wild. You take out the roots, and if you, ta if you have plants, you, you take out the roots, then, then the plant is dead. So if the demand is still increasing, uh, one, one day there will be no rotula on, the, on, the, on this planet. And uh, so we decided to, to create the cultivar to, and to develop a cultivation of this, uh, this rotula rosea. <coughs> uh, and we and we t decided to take uh, Swiss ecotypes, and we, we have taken. We, we went to the Swiss mountains, for example, here in Matmark. Here is uh, just on the other side is Domodossola, uh, and four different uh, four different uh, sites. They were analyzed, and it was there was quite big difference in the rosavine content. But what is what was very spectacular was the big difference within within uh, within a site, from three to nearly nothing. We have individuals with nearly nothing uh, uh, rosavine, and individuals with with three percent. That means that the diversity is very high. But and the same thing for uh, for salid rosite, with very high. Uh, Contents in 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 the, in the side of Matmark and very low, for example, here in Unteral. But but we also saw that is that in this alpine region, the contents of these two molecules, interesting molecules, are much higher than 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 in the Scandinavian types, and uh, that uh, that was the reason why we tried to to to, to uh, Develop a cultivar with this uh, with this alpine rhodiola rosea, and uh, we, we try that according to our uh, normal procedures. So I don't want to go in detail. And what what was also very interesting, we compared uh, uh, wild, let's say old plants from wild. We take some uh, some. Uh, some root parts, and we put it in in a field in our experimental station. And then, after after three years, we analyzed uh, the the content, and it was very well correlated. 
So if you have a very low content of salirosite in wild, you have also very low content in cultivation. That means lo that is logic. It's not always as, always goes. It's it's not all. It's not going always in this direction, but it's very interesting. So you can mark the it, from wild. Uh, uh, you can mark the plants you have chosen in wild, and then if it's very it's if it's a very interesting pop, very interesting plant, then you can go next year. And then you can take some uh, you, you can you can take some root parts and then develop something or develop uh, parental lines with uh, with this uh, with this with this mother plant. So in this way, we have chosen then different uh, different parental lines. Uh, Rhodia rosa. Oh, have uh, female plants and uh, male plants. They are not hermaphroditic. So we have chosen uh, four, four female plants with, with very high solid rosite and rosavine contents and four male plants. Uh, we put them together and that gave a, a polycross and a population cultivar. We call them population cultivar, population variety. And this population variety was then uh, 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 the seeds were then uh, used to produce plantlets, and the plantlets were put then in the field. Uh, the, the duration of this culture is about four years, and then after four years, you can you can uh, after four years it's possible to to harvest the roots, and then the roots were were sold to the to the company uh, I, uh, producing the tambo. So this is an, an approach also important in this context of medicinal aromatic plants to, to avoid over-harvesting by cultiva cultivation. So this Matmark population varieties give good, good yields, it had very high contents on solid rosite and good contents in rosavines, and seed is produced by this company, Mediseeds, which I called which I said before, and the internet is internet website is uh, is this one. So if uh, now I ex I give some information about four dif uh, about different procedures to get good genotypes to get good cultivars. If you have now the good cultivar, you had to optimize the cultivation procedures to get a very good quality product. And there uh, we had there. Per, per cultivar, it's important to, to develop the best uh, planting procedure. The most important thing is to, to define the harvest stage, the, 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 the optimal harvest stage, to get a very high content in, uh, in the plants because that the content in the beginning is not very high, then it's increasing to a, in, at a certain level, it's, it's on the top, and then it's decreasing now, and you had to, to find the harvest Stage under the top of the of the active ingredients you you want to uh, you want to uh, extract then harvesting procedures normally mechanically to reduce the cost methods to protect the plant against diseases and and uh, and uh, pests harvesting techniques also developing machines fertilization treatments drying techniques to to make possible that the that to conserve this uh, this plant material, storage condition, and then extraction procedures had also to develop. And all this research is important to answer these questions. All the agronomic research is very important, and and uh, the results are formulated in the good agricultural practice practices to enhance and to standardize the quality of medicinal plants. So that would be a second lecture, uh, all this, but uh, now we, we stop here. I come to the conclusion. Cultivation of medicinal plants is essential to supply the increasing global demand, especially for species with, 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 with high demand. Uh, it's not possible to, to collect them from wild uh, because we create a lot of other problems. Agronomic research plays an essential role in the, and it's the very first step if we consider the whole chain from from the plants to the to, to the herbal medicine uh, to optimize the cultivation of medicinal plant and and to optimize the quality of the raw material by efficient breeding programs and also cultivation 
procedures, tests. Therefore, it's also very important to have a good biodiversity available and, and, uh, and genetic resources to, to do efficient breeding. Uh, we saw that with, uh, with the hypericum. With, uh, if you don't have a very big choice and a big diverse, the diverse genotypes, it is, it's not possible to, to make good breeding. And for each created cultivar, the development of optimized cultivation procedures is necessary to formulate good agricultural practices and improve the benefit of medicinal plant. So we are working according to this model. What we want are yield of active compounds, very, a maximum of yield of active compounds. That depends on radiation. We have to, medicinal plants and all the plants are better, are, are growing better if, if they are sun than when without sun, that is clear. Uh, but uh, not ra radiation is important, but also the capture of radiation is, is important. That means uh, very quick leaf development at the beginning of, of the, uh, when we plant uh, the seeds or the plantlets, very quick uh, leaf development to capture the, the sunlight. This is important to have a high yield. And then the radiation use efficiency must be high. That means photosynthesis. The harvest index, so if you want leaves, it's important that we have plants that, that they invest not every uh, every uh, that, 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 that they invest most of their sugars in, uh, in in leaves and not in roots, for example. The harvest index must high. The concentration of the desi desired compounds must 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 can be increased as we saw uh, with Artemisia annua. And very and one very very important issue is to avoid losses, losses by diseases, pests, or frost, etc. And all these factors which are influencing the yield of active compounds are dependent on the genotype, so breeding, a good genotype is important. Uh, on the cultivation procedures, it's important to cultivate in an optimal way, and it's important also to choose the, the optimal environment to get very high yield and then very, uh, a very good economical performance for the farmers, uh, but also then also for, for the companies which are buying these products. Perspectives for botanical and agronomic research in medicinal plants. As I mentioned before several times, preservation of species and genetic diversity is very important, also in the future. Uh, preservation in situ or ex situ. In this context, var various policies, plans, and interventions have been recommended worldwide at international and national and state level, such as the Convention on Biological Diversity, that defined by the United Nations <coughs> in, in 92, and, and also very important the ex situ uh, preservation by botanical gardens, gene banks or micro, micro propagation of, of, of interesting genotypes by research institutes, etc. Another aspect is that conventional breeding, as, as I showed before, the for example, prevails in medicinal aromatic plants because it's a cheap method and uh, the high natural variability of, of most medicinal and aromatic plant species provides a good basic to achieve high breeding progress in short time. So, uh, so in the future, conventional breeding will will be still very important. However, gene molecular techniques will, will the importance will also in in this domain will increase. Uh, for example, very simple things, mole molecular marker, but also functional genomics and metabolomic engineering can be can become important in the future. Another aspect is uh, biotechnological production in plant cell cultures that would be a possible alterna alternative to cultivation in the future. But I think it would be difficult to, to say that, that that are herbal plants. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I lost <coughs> I lost my, my 
this. <coughs> at, the <lo> <coughs> at the last slide, it's not a problem. <coughs> so by biotechnological production could be a, <coughs> a future step in, in the future. For example, <coughs> taking genes from plants and put it in microalgae or, or, or in, in other microorganism to, to, to produce uh, to produce these uh, desired uh, uh, active compounds. So the last sentence. I'm uh, happy. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, special thanks to the different companies and different NGOs which uh, are supporting us. Uh, the Swiss government and the regional government also for their financial and technical support. And thank you very much for your, thank you for your attention. Excuse me for my voice. <laughs>